You know, the only thing distinguishing this vlog from one of my main channel videos is the fact that I'm wearing sweatpants and I don't care if you guys see. What's what you're meant to see? turn on the Xbox, that's a lot of electricity we were wasting, I felt, in order to watch something on the TV, so we often just watch something on our phones, and having the tablet was just that much of a step up from that. So I got the tablet, and I knew right away, if I was going to have a tablet, it needed to have some nice note-taking functionalities. I had a bit of a trial and error going on there, and I ended up settling on Squid. Her cats down here. I'm just playing with them. Of course, in all of my research and obsession and just watching people do their digital note taking, of course, I saw Apple Atmosphere for note taking and it was quite nice. And then I eventually found that one of Apple's major note taking apps, Note Shelf, is actually had an Android. Bless you! It actually has an Android app. So, ended up purchasing it for the video and ideally it been so I could transfer over to using Note Shelf. But then, Samsung Notes got their upgrade and I decided that today we're going to just do a comparison of the three apps. I will say, it's not going to be super in-depth, super thorough, mostly because... But you did not. Coco, give that to me. It's not going to be super in-depth, super thorough. I'm not going to go over every spec and detail and feature of these apps because the fact of the matter is there's one feature that was by far the most worth it thing for me and it made the writing experience on my tablet so comfortable that I genuinely, this feature alone makes me want to write books on my tablet because it just makes it so comfortable and it makes me want to write on my tablet so much. So, let's do it. Let's go ahead and start out with the oldie but the Mei squid. I'm giving a little too much shit, it's fine. 
biggest issue with squid is you're very limited to how you can organize things. It makes it really hard for me to look at squid because it's essentially just a bunch of notes, not notebooks. You have a bunch of notes thrown around. If you open the app, it immediately takes you to your recent notes page, which is just, maybe it's because I haven't gotten a enough different separate notes for it to cut off how many notes are on here but it seems to be just all of your notes which I don't like because <laughs> that's it's, it's very overwhelming for me I'm not a fan of that going into the notes there are a couple things that just this app is not comfortable to use the way they've organized the menu bar makes it super awkward and clunky to change the writing utensil that you're using the color of the writing utensil as well they do have a like full color spectrum you can select from which is nice still i've been using this since february and i'm still not comfortable with it you just have one pen you have one uh highlighter one major issue i have with colors in this app is that like i can't make my own palette i can't have select colors saved that i like so it just shuffles through your most recent ones. So if I used a color for a specific project that I know I'll get back to using that specific project, like if I were to have a planner in this and I have a specific color for a topic or for a category in my planner, I would have to refine that color on the color wheel as opposed to having it just be, being able to keep it saved somewhere. The other thing that really, really gets to me is that so many basic features are are blocked with a paywall, and that kind of grosses me out. Like, I can't use a highlighter without paying. I can't use shapes. I can't type without paying. That feels like one of these things where the company is, is trying to take advantage of the customer. That's really how it feels to me, and I don't like it. Because it's one thing if you made me pay for the whole app, like, no, no shelf did. But you're making me pay for specific features that are such basic, important features in a note-taking app that it feels like I'm being taken advantage of as someone who wants to choose digital note-taking. And that's one of the major reasons why I'm not a big fan of it. But on the other hand, they do have a lot of options in terms of preloaded page templates. You cannot upload any additional ones, but instead you can insert a photo or PDF. So that's that one. I wanna really lick you from your head to your toes and I wanna... Next app! Note Shelf. I love the aesthetic, the UI of Note Shelf. It's very pleasing to me. I'm gonna be putting a link up here to a channel. This is a channel I watched before I purchased Note Shelf to kind of get a feel of what some of the features were before I really kind of jumped in uh, so if you want any more better more detailed information about it I will put it up there but I love the UI because it looks like I'm looking at a, a bookshelf that has all of my notebooks just facing out to me and I love that and when you are making a new notebook it has a bunch of preloaded covers that you can do you can then download more from their little store that they have the store is again it's kind of limited it's more than anything else has but it's still it's decently limited in terms of what they have for notebook covers but you can always upload more and they again have another like massive store of page templates that you can download from so you can do that going into a notebook my biggest issue with this app so this is the one that they have an ipad version but then they went ahead and made an android version and the Android version is much less equipped than the iPad version of the app. It has some nice features. It has just a page to lead you to clip art that you can add into your notebooks, which is cute. It has some audio features. They aren't they aren't as advanced as they are on iPad, and they aren't as advanced as the Samsung Notes ones are. When I was trying to record some B-roll footage for this, I don't know how the B-roll footage is gonna look, by the way, because I recorded it and you know, I, I don't have a recording setup designed for recording top down of my tablet. But I was recording B roll footage of it, and this app has gotten so goddamn buggy. I, I just had to stop. I was so frustrated with it. But yeah, it has some fine features. You have a favorites bar that you can keep separate from your actual tool bar. You have your tools, you have 
three different types of pens, a couple, uh, probably around six or eight different sizes for the pens, two different types of highlighters, and six different sizes of highlighters. If you were using No Chup on Android, I would not recommend you using stickers at all because resizing on this app is so janky. It's, I, I can try, hopefully you can see it on the footage, but if I grab the corner to try and resize and make it smaller, halfway through, if I keep going, it'll start getting bigger and just freaking out. So I, I wouldn't recommend using stickers at all or pictures at all if you're trying to use this app for journaling or planning. Um, what's that up? The other major thing that bothers me is that the pages, the way you try to get to pages is going left to right. It, it's so easily, I'll be writing or even just zooming in and it'll just turn the page so quickly. And it, it just, it's, it bothers me, it ticks me off and it just kind of ruins the smoothness and the flow of this whole experience. The thing that really kind of made me salty with this app, there's this one feature that the app conversion has that this one doesn't have. It's the little box. There's a little box over a small part portion of text. And then below that on the screen, you have a bigger box that is zoomed in to show that frame. And so you can write, and it'll write in proportion with that other box and move along as you go. And I was really excited to try out that feature when I purchased this app. It was not available on the Android version, which makes me sad. This also is not pressure sensitive to my pens at all. I have multiple pens on this. Oh, last thing before we pop over. This was something I discovered that when I was trying to record this B-roll footage and it was super weird and kind of stupid is that, oh, I guess my eraser doesn't work in this app either. Cute, love that. Are you a button? You're not a button. For some reason, if I use a black background on this app, the highlighters really don't show up at all. It looks like I'm, I'm using a highlighter on black paper, which is stupid. Because the pens don't do that. The pens show up opaquely. I want a highlighter to show up opaque compared to the paper, but translucent compared to the text. And for some reason, it doesn't do that. And I think that's absolutely stupid. This is the only time I've ever seen an issue with this. On Squid, if I insert a PDF that has dark paper, highlighter still works on it. So I don't know what this app's problem is. Because that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen and my cat just ran into the camera cool thanks that's not rude but yeah so this app has a lot of issues it needs to work out but we're not gonna worry about that for right now I'll probably come back to it like we might check in on this app every six months or so to see how it's going because again I really do like the, the aesthetic the UI of seeing notebooks instead of just a bunch of notes are you okay chestnut are you okay losing his fucking mind. But yeah, we'll probably check on in this regularly because again, I own this app. I honestly think my best option is realistically going to be trying to contact Samsung and see if that is anything they might consider in the future making this more of a notebook aesthetic as opposed to individual like notes, like pieces of scratch paper thrown around. But I digress. As we move on to Samsung Notes. As I'm sure you see, can tell Samsung Notes has easily grown to be my favorite of these apps and here is why I, I, I don't know why I'm like this right now I'm not I'm not tipsy first of all my fucking eraser works so that's dope so you again get some different templates not a ton not nearly as many as you get with note shell really not even as many as you can put squid but again you can upload backgrounds and those are now official options you can use for a background as a, for a page or a whole set of notes so here's like a weird thing you can also change the background color of the notes but you can't change them to white which i find kind of weird like i can have it as a light gray but i can't have it as a white the only other major issue that i have well, that i think is an actual issue a it's not available on non-samsung apps which i think is a complete missed opportunity and i would perf i would like that so that way i am able to sync this information between all of my devices some of them aren't samsung devices i think they just need to deal with that but i would love to be able to like have the information for the book that i'm writing on my phone on my tablet on my computer which i think i might be able to jerry rig away to get it on my computer though 
but have it everywhere so that way no matter where I am I have all the information I need for all of my work that'd be nice but like the really irritating kind of bug buggy issue is that you can't like grab and move text the only way you can move text is if you hit the enter key or if you t if you tab it or specifically select left middle right orientation but the two best things about this app one it is genuinely constantly updating and that's probably the benefit of having an app from such a major company as samsung when i initially started taking notes for this i had written down the note that i wish that our the pen sizes could get a little bit smaller because i tend to like a finer point i think a day or two before i was getting ready to record the b-roll footage i checked the app had been updated and i could indeed get those pen sizes smaller so it's nice to see that an app is updating so regularly with things that customers and consumers like myself would really, really enjoy. The other thing is that box. It makes the writing experience so comfortable. I just, I love it so much. Something for me that I struggle with, and that is the reason why I've struggled with the idea of even trying to move my writing my novels on a tablet of any sort, is the fact that I feel like I need to be able to just see everything at once if I need to. And so having the ability to use this magnified box to t write instead of zooming in all the way to, to get to a form where it's the right size for me to write, it, it, it makes it feel so good to me. Another added bonus to, to that same effect is that on this app, I can write and still edit a document uh, while keeping a side dashboard of all of my pages. So if I had a page that I would need to pop back into quite a bit, that makes it super easy for me to have this reference page off to the side right here. The only other like quote unquote thing that would be nice to have is I would appreciate it if I, if I needed a bit more intention to, to move on to the next page at the moment, as even as I scroll just to the bottom of one page, it pulls up the next, which sometimes it's convenient, sometimes it's a little too much for me. So I wish that was like something I could turn on and off. The other thing would be layers. I've seen one app kind of start to work with the idea of having layers. And I think it was actually the Remarkable app that goes with the Remarkable writing tablet. Your notes are divided into layers, so that way, say, if I did make a whole beautiful Bujo spread on my tablet, I can have the design of the whole spread on one layer, and then I can move up to another layer to edit the text and stuff, so that way, if I need to move text, I would actually move some design features, stuff like that, that'd be really nice as well. Yeah, that writing box is by far so worth it to me because I think I'm going to get very comfortable with that app and use it quite a bit. I don't know how much I'll really want to try and transfer anything over to Note Shelf if they do eventually get that text box and maybe a couple other features and fix all of their bugs. So I think honestly, the next step for me in my note taking journey is I am very interested in a paper like protector. Oh, here's another issue that I have. For some reason, on Samsung tablets, there's a slide out app drawer. There's a slide out app drawer right here. I can't access that when I'm actually in editing mode of my app. That I feel is just kind of weird and for the sake of me doing something bullet journaly, it's a missed opportunity for me to have such ease of access to just grab my gallery and put it next to this whole thing. Any of the B-roll that I film is actually of me rewriting notes that I took for old videos and all of those will be linked up there for you guys. Naturally, I will keep you guys super up to date with all of my note taking, life journeys, the whole works. And eventually I do need to just make a full video updating you guys on what my actual journaling system looks like. But until then, maledictions friends. Um, just Nintendo in general, like a lot of Nintendo.